We pity your pathetic dependence on this web video for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. Japanese Prime Minister Abe has been trying to rally support for a bill that would let the government designate state secrets. Lower House members approved the bill last week. Abe wants upper House members to endorse it by Friday when the current diet session ends. Abe spoke at a meeting of ministers and members of the ruling coalition parties. He acknowledged that the bill has drawn criticism, but said he'd work to win people's support. My administration will continue to provide detailed explanations to help ease public concern over the proposed legislation. The bill would designate some information as state secrets. People leaking such information would face up to 10 years in prison. It's enough to make you sick. I really wouldn't know, sir. I'm just a servant. Yeah. On the other hand, go screw yourself. But some Japanese citizens are worried about what the secrecy bill could mean. Protesters on Monday lit up the Tokyo night with candles in a rally for free speech. <laughs> Lawyers, journalists and other concerned citizens gathered outside the Diet Building. Organizers say about 1,300 people took part. A senior member of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party caused controversy earlier in the day. He used his blog to compare noisy demonstrators to terrorists. Rally organizer Yuichi Kaido defended his companions from accusations of terrorism. We are only citizens exercising the right to free speech to say no to the bill. The bill doesn't clarify what will be considered a state secret and what will be a crime. The protesters say they'll fight against the secrecy bill for as long as necessary. This video will utilize auditory tones and flashing images to stimulate your memory of the news content featured this week on our website. On November 18, 2013, TEPCO started to remove fuel from the Unit 4 spent fuel pool at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station. During this, fuel stored in the spent fuel pool is placed inside a transportation cask and then transported to the common pool. TEPCO is ensuring that the utmost attention is paid to the safety of the people and any possible impact on the surrounding environment. TEPCO has taken a significant step forward in its work to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, which will require 30 to 40 years to complete. First, the cask in which the fuel is to be transported is lowered into the spent fuel pool. Next, a newly installed fuel handling machine carefully lifts up fuel assemblies one by one at a speed of approximately one centimeter per second and loads them into the cask. It is possible that small pieces of debris have become trapped between the fuel and the rack. Therefore, we conduct the work carefully watching and confirming each stage via an underwater camera and a measuring instrument. The fuel loading takes place underwater where radiation is shielded. Therefore, the radiation dose around the work area does not increase. The fuel handling machine is equipped with a sensor which automatically stops the machine when an abnormal weight is detected. We will continue the work with full attention paid to safety cask loaded with 22 fuel assemblies is lowered with a crane to a trailer on the ground. The wire structure for lowering the cask employs double wires and is capable of raising and lowering the cask using only one wire. Therefore, even in the unlikely event that one of the wires breaks, the cask will not fall. The cask is transported to another building and the fuel taken out to be stored in the common pool. We have conducted this operation 1,200 times previously and therefore have ample experience. Furthermore, the operators were fully prepared and trained for this operation, for example, by participating in a special program on using the fuel handling machine and the crane. 
In addition, we have received confirmation on the operation from Mr. Lake Barrett, an outside expert and a former U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission official, and from other international third parties. We will conduct this operation safely and steadily. The transfer of all 1,533 fuel assemblies is scheduled for completion by the end of 2014. And in a surprise announcement this morning, U.S. Deputy Surgeon General Greg Paulson stated that, quote, it's fine to smoke cigarettes if you only smoke while drinking. With every spew of ash and lava, Japan Coast Guard officials say an islet formed by volcanic activity keeps getting bigger and bigger. The landmass surfaced off Nishinoshima Island about a thousand kilometers south of Tokyo. Sunday, Coast Guard officials conducted an aerial survey and determined that the islet is now 250 meters wide and 200 meters long. That's about two and a half times bigger than when it was spotted almost two weeks ago. Officials now say they found three craters pushing out ash and lava that are helping to make the islet grow. A researcher says the Coast Guard will continue to monitor the islet's activity. We imagine that in the infinite universes parallel to this one, you are still staring dumbfounded at this video. Japan's Minister for Negotiating the Trans-Pacific Partnership Free Trade Pact has fallen ill. Akira Amari was striving to seal a deal by year end, but officials say he's likely to stay in hospital for a few days. The Economic Revitalization Minister Amari felt unwell on Monday at a crucial juncture for the talks. Amari met U.S. Trade Representative Michael Froman on Sunday. Some government officials said they're worried Amari's absence could impact the free trade talks. Amari is also in charge of new economic measures leaders hope to finalize this week. But Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said the trade negotiations will stay their course. He said Amari will give instructions from hospital. Ministers regroup in Singapore on Saturday for more TPP talks. Officials will decide if Amari attends pending more information about his condition.
and all risky allies. One more meltdown, our president is now bound, the moon's rising up to the sky. And like little ants, we build more nuclear plants, ignoring the red traffic light. U.S. Vice President Joe Biden is on a visit to Asia to meet leaders in Tokyo, Beijing and Seoul. China's newly declared zone will be high on the agenda. Biden will sit down with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He'll then meet with President Xi Jinping and other Chinese leaders. And let's say Biden has started his Asian tour in Japan to highlight the decades-old alliance between the two countries and coordinate the response to China. He'll travel to South Korea later this week. Congratulations, you have completed this video with flying colors. Please await your certificate and complimentary fruit basket in the mail before proceeding any further.